Hello, everybody, and welcome to my channel, Jesus and Coffee Conversations. Thank you for joining me today. I am going to be talking to you guys about two women from the Bible, as I can see you, my women of the Bible Bible study series. And I am going to be reading from the Lemon Translation. Um, hello to my new subscribers. If this is your first time watching me, I am going to be talking about women from the Bible. I'm doing a women of the Bible Bible study series. I do have a lot of other videos on here. Um, and I will be talking about other things um, from time to time. But right now I am on this women of the Bible Bible study series. Okay. Uh, make sure you guys share my videos. Make sure you like my videos because when you like in my videos, that helps with the algorithm and my videos pop up on suggested videos to bring more people over. Make sure you guys comment and tell others about my channel. Um, make sure you press the bell so you're notified when I upload videos. Make sure you follow me on my social media platforms and all those things. Um, all of that will be in the description box below. And I think that's everything um so i probably will be drinking some water throughout this video my head is hurting and my throat <laughs> when i talk a lot it gets like you guys know, are making like that deep tickle and it's like you're coughing and coughing and it's just still right there so i have my water here um i'm gonna go ahead and drink some real quick so oh also if you like this mug this is from my online jesus and coffee conversation store okay so that'll be in the description box below for you as well so um the first person i'm going to start with is queen vashti because that is who king i think is xerxes let's have her people pronounce it although it's not spelled that way um but i'm gonna go with king xerxes okay so uh she was married to him and this was way before Esther. So the king had this big party and um, him and, you know, the men that were getting drunk, I think it was like a week long party. So it was a lot of drinking and music and just having a good time. And then the queen, of course, was, you know, having something for the women. And so one night of the festivities, the king wanted to show Queen Vashti off to his friends. And so he had um, his men go to the queen to say, you know, the king wants you to come, you know, to his quarters, whatever. And she refused to go. So her care services is, first of all, she was beautiful. Okay, so she was a really beautiful woman. And um, outside of that, she knew that she was a queen and she carried herself that way. So when he requested for her to, you know, come to his quarters to be shown off in front of his friends, she refused to go because she was like, I am not going to be, you know, paraded around in front of your joint friends. Okay. That's basically what she said. And I'll read some of that. It's in Esther chapter one, um, verse 10. On the final day, when the king was feeling high, half drunk from wine, he told the seven eunuchs, who were his personal aides, I'm not going to say their names because they're hard to pronounce, verse 11, to bring Queen Vashti to him with the warrior crown upon her head so that all the men could gaze upon her beauty. So we know that she was very beautiful, for she was a very beautiful woman. But when they conveyed the emperor's orders to Queen Vashti, she refused to come. The king was furious, but first consulted his lawyers, for he did nothing without their advice. They were men of wisdom who knew the temper of the times, as well as Persian law and justice, and the king trusted their judgment. So, first of all, she was very beautiful. Second of all, she carried herself like a queen. So, when you are carrying yourself like a queen, then you are refusing to be paraded in front of a group of men to just look at you okay so then it goes into that she has standards and she implemented those standards so her standards were i am not gonna go before you and your drunk friends for you just to show me off like that was her standard and she was like you look you're drunk and if you were in your right mind right now you wouldn't even be asking me to do this okay so she had her standards and she knew that by refusing to obey the king and do what he wanted her to do that that could cost her it could either cost her her life 
or she was at risk of, you know, um, him divorcing her, okay? So then the last thing is she was brave. So she was beautiful. She knew she was a queen and she carried herself that way. She had her standards. She stood by those standards and she was brave enough to stand by those standards. And so the king ended up taking the advice of his friends because they were like, look, if you allow the queen to basically disobey you and refuse to come, you know, to this, uh, to your chambers to, you know, see your friends or whatever, then all the other women are going to hear about this and then they all start being disrespectful and disobedient to us too. Because back in those days, like, you know, women were obedient to, you know, their husbands and all that stuff. And so... He was like, and he, the king, was like, you know what? You guys are right. So we're going to banish Queen Vashti from this, uh, um, what's she called? The, the Providence. And she's no longer going to be queen. <clears throat> she's not going to be queen anymore. So that is what happened. So she understood that she was taking a risk by refusing to do what the queen, uh, no, the queen, what the king requested her to do. And that is where Queen Esther comes into play. But Queen Vashti can teach us a lot because even though she was beautiful, because you have some women that are very beautiful and they would have been like, you know what? It is no problem for me to like come in front of my husband's, you know, friends and have him show me off. Like a lot of women would have done that. And she was like, no, like I'm not going to do that. First of all, all of y'all are drunk. And I'm not about to be paraded like a piece of meat. So she had her standards. And this is an important lesson because when you have standards, you always run the risk of turning people away. And by turning people away, I mean the wrong people. You run the risk of turning the wrong people away, which is what you want anyway. Your standards are not going to run off people that are meant to be in your life. And that's not going to run away people that are genuinely good-hearted people so ladies keep your standards if a man like if your standard is i don't have sex before marriage keep that standard so if he's coming to you and he's like oh okay well i can get it from somebody let him go get it from somebody else then go be with her over there if that's what you want to do so you need to keep your standards and know that your standards are only going to run off the wrong people so you want the wrong people up out your face anyway so let them go on about their business. So Queen Vashti, we don't know how she felt when he was like, you're no longer going to be queen. But I'm sure she left out of there with her head held high. She had her standards. She stood her ground. And she was willing to take the risk of no longer being queen. So your standards are going to cost you. But that is okay. Keep your standards anyway. doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. Keep your standards, all right? So going into Esther. So the king, once his anger cools, now he started missing Queen Vashti, right? So in the heat of the moment, he was drunk. He was mad. He was listening to his friends. And so now he's mad because he listens to his friends and he no longer has his wife. So then his friends come back around and they're like, okay, we'll just get somebody else, right? You know, just she's gone. It, get another queen up in here, right? Because Queen Vashti's not the only person in the world or whatever. So he was like, okay, yeah, y'all are right. So they have like this world, not world, but this Providence-wide, um, I don't even know if you want to call it contest, but I'll say contest, where they had all the women in the land um, come to the palace and, excuse me, they had to go through the, um, what do you call it? Like the beautification process okay and that is all in esther chapter two so esther she was also beautiful she was beautiful inside and out so her parents had died and she was an orphan and she was living with her cousin mordecai and he basically treated her like his daughter um and so he had heard about you know what the king had going on and so he was like okay esther you know, I want you to go to the palace and enter this, you know, contest or whatever it was. And he was like, but don't tell anybody that you're Jewish. So 
she was beautiful um and it goes I'm trying to see if it's in chapter two it might be chapter three let me see chapter two um okay i don't know it's somewhere chapter two or chapter three one of them okay you have to be knowing y'all so she was very beautiful she was beautiful inside and out the second thing is she was favored so god allowed her to have favor with the head person in charge of this contest thing so this person gave her like the best department he gave her um the best beauty treatments he knew exactly what kind what he knew exactly what the king liked so he made sure to give Esther all the things that the king liked. So like he dressed her exactly according to the taste of the king. And because of that, and because God, you know, allowed her to have favor, the king picked her to be the next queen. And that is in chapter two, verse. 12. I want to say it starts at verse 12. I'm kind of speedy beating. All right, we'll start at verse 12. The instructions concerning these girls were that before being taken to the king's bed, each would be given six months of beauty treatments with oil of myrrh, followed by six months with special perfumes and ointments. Then, as each girl's turn came for spending the night with King Xerxes, she was given her choice of clothing or jewelry she wished to enhance her beauty. She was taken to the king's apartment in the evening and the next morning returned to the second harem where the king's wives lived. There she was under the care of Shashgaz, who are these names, another of the king's eunuchs and lived there the rest of her life, never seeing the king again unless he had especially enjoyed her and called her, called for her by name. Verse 15, when it was Esther's turn to go to the king, she accepted the advice of Haggai, which was the chief unit in charge, um, and dressed according to his instructions. And all the other girls exclaimed with delight when they saw her. So she was beautiful. Like even the other women were like, oh wow, like she is just gorgeous. Um, and then verse 16, so Esther was taken to the palace of the king in January of the seventh year of his reign. Well, the king loved Esther more than any of the other girls. He was so delighted by her or with her that he set the royal crown on her head and declared her queen instead of Vashti. So as soon as he saw Esther, he was like, you are gonna be the queen. And so he put the crown on her head. And they had like a big party and you know, all of these things. Um, and she still did not tell anybody that she was Jewish. So she was being obedient to her cousin Mordecai, which is another character trait that she had. Because in, chap in chapter 2, verse 10, Mordecai specifically said, um, Esther had not told anyone that she was a Jewish, a Jewess, but Mordecai had said not to. And then again, in verse 20, Esther still, had, and this was after she became queen, Esther still hadn't told anyone she was a Jewess, for she was still following Mordecai's orders, just as she had in his home. So even when she was living, you know, under his roof, she was obedient to him. And so here you can see that she was a woman of obedience. And that obedience comes in handy when down the line, Haman, um, if you keep reading, and I actually talked about this um, in my God Will Handle Your Enemies video. That's my number one video. Like it has over 10,000 views on it. I still get comments on that video <laughs> to this day. Um, and I talk about Haman and like how all of that went down. I'll have that pop up here so you can go watch it after this. But basically Haman hated Mordecai because Mordecai refused to bow down to him and, you know, essentially obey him. And so uh, he tricked the king into having this decree to kill all the Jews. And so Mordecai was in mourning for that. And Esther, you know, asked like, what's going on? Like, you know, why are you so sad? Why are you wearing? Cause in those days they were like sackcloth and ash, ashes. And he refused to put on, you know, the clothes that she sent him. And so he finally told her like, 
you know, there's a decree that Haman sent out to where the Jews are going to be killed and I need you to go to the king and let the king know, talk him out of this. And so at first Esther was like, you know, she wasn't going to do it. And then Mordecai was like, don't think that just because you queen that you're not going to be put to death too. Because once they find out you a Jew, you're going to be dead just with just like the rest of us. And so basically he was like, you know, you were born for such a time as this. And so she was like, okay, you know, so she had to be brave. And she was, well, I'm all over the place with this character trait. <laughs> so let me just go ahead and break it down. So as to her character trait, she was favored. She was wise. She was brave. Disciplined. Beautiful inside and out. And obedient. So she was wise because she was like, you know what? I'm going to call a fast. So she didn't just immediately like go before the king because she knew that if she did that, she would be put to death. Because if the king didn't call for you, it would cost you your life. Unless he extended like the golden scepter or whatever to you. Um, and so she was wise and she was like, you know what? Let me seek God about this first. So she was like, okay, we're going to, you know, do a three day fast. We're not going to have any food. And we're not going to drink anything. So I think that it even included water. So it was like a what people call like a dry fast. So no food, no water for three days. And then she was like, and on the third day or after the third day, then I will go before the king. And if I die for doing it, then so be it. I'll die. Um, and of course, she did not die. The king, you know, saw her. And, you know, because he loves her so much and God allowed her to have favor with him, he had extended the scepter and um she was disciplined first let me back it up she was disciplined first because she was able to do that three-day fast if you ever try a fast y'all fasting is hard okay especially if you love food like i do it is very hard to fast unless your mind is absolutely made up like this is what i'm gonna do right but other than that you really have to be disciplined when it comes to fasting okay i can't tell you how many fasts i started and I end up cheating because I was not disciplined in it. I have had successful fasts, of course, but it really takes a lot of discipline and you really have to have your mind made up like this is what I'm going to do. Okay. So she had to be disciplined for that. Then she was brave because she went before the king and, you know, like I said, they could have cost her her life. So thankfully he has sent the scepter to her. And she, you know, came up with this whole story about, you know, I want you guys to come to the palace. You can read the book of Esther for yourself. I'm, I'm summarizing, paraphrasing here, okay? And then watch the video that I said about your enemies, because I think I talk about it in that one, break it down. So she has, like, the banquet, and, yeah, the banquet for, you know, the king and Haman. And she finally tells the king, like, I'm a Jew. And they, Haman, <laughs> out of all of them, was like, because he knew he messed up. So that was a good thing that she did not let it be known that she was a Jew until it was time for her to tell that she was a Jew. So this is where being wise and obedient comes into play. And so she tells the king, you know, like my people are about to be put to death. And he's like, well, who are your people? Like, what are you talking about? And even Haman saying, they're like, who are your people? Like, what, what are you talking about? So then when she was like, the Jews, that's when Haman was like, oh crap, oh crap, like I'm about, I'm about to kill the queen. So of course the king gets really furious and he, you know, leaves and then Haman's like begging for his life and all this stuff. Okay. So yeah, read the best on your own. But she was able to save her people ultimately. So God used her in a mighty way. So when it goes back to Queen Vashti, if she would have still been queen, more than likely, the Jews would have been wiped out. Because Mordecai was working at the palace for the king, and Haman was like the second in command to the king or something like that. And he could not stand Mordecai because Mordecai, like, Haman would walk by, the people would bow down to him and like all these things. And Mordecai refused to bow down to him because Haman is a man. He's not God. And so that's what Haman got upset about. He's like, everybody else is bowing down to me. Like, why are you not bowing down to me too? And he, that frustrated him. And so out of his hatred, he um, had the king sign that decree and say, look, I'm going to kill the Jews in the land. So if Queen Vashti was still queen, 
more than likely that plan would have happened. So this is how God works. So God was able to move by Queen Vashti having her stand, standards and all those things and it, you know, making the king angry. Then it caused him to get rid of Queen Vashti and a, um, what's the lady name? No, Esther. Queen Esther was able to um, take the place of queen and ultimately save her people. So this is how God operates behind the scenes. Like we don't know the moves that God is making. So the devil thinks he has something like planned and all this stuff and you know, you're gonna fall into this trap or whatever. And behind the scenes, God is like, uh, no, I'm God, I got this. And God starts moving things around. He starts letting you find favor with who you need to find favor with. He starts letting everything work out, you know, according to like his plan. And this is why I try not to get discouraged because I know that behind the scenes, God is working. So I can't see what he's doing, but ultimately things begin to work out in my favor. And this is why in the Bible, in the New Testament, it says, you know, all things work, all things work for the good according to those calls to his purpose. I'm like, I might be messing it all up, but I will find it. But it says something like that. So basically, because I am living right, you know, for God and for him, then everything that the enemy means for evil, God turns it around. He works it out for my good because I'm called according to God's purpose. So when you are in right standing with God, it doesn't matter what the devil is doing. Ultimately, God has your back and God is going to work everything out for your good. So it looked like Haman was about to kill the Jews, but because Esther was in position, and she called, she used her wisdom to call that fast. And this is another reason why fasting is important because fasting helps, makes God move on your behalf. Because you're sacrificing um, something. Sorry, I'm getting a text message. So you're sacrificing something and God sees that sacrifice. He honors that sacrifice and that causes him to move on your behalf and when you're fasting that's a surefire way to hear directly from God so when I'm fasting I hear from God so much more clearly than when I'm not fasting I still hear from him when I'm not fasting but there's it's just there's a difference to it like when I'm fasting it's just like I am more in tune with the spiritual realm and I'm more in tune with God and I'm, I'm getting, you know, like all these downloads and things like that. And so that is one of the reasons that fasting is important. So Queen Esther, you know, called that fast. She was in position and God was able to use her to put a stop to that decree where his people were going to be slaughtered. And this is something else we see too, where the devil thinks he, he won. And when Jesus came on the scene, Right? The devil is just trying to wipe, you know, Jesus completely out by having King Herod kill, you know, like all the men, um, you know, children and boy ch children and all that stuff uh, because he, you know, was terrified of Jesus coming. And so the devil was using Herod to kill the boys, you know, but God was able to save Jesus. So God is always like 20 steps ahead of the devil. So that is what you can take from this story with Queen Esther. Sorry, I need something else to drink. So that is something else that you can say from the story of Queen Esther is to be disciplined and your beauty, ladies, um, do not, I'm trying to think of a way to say this. There's a lot of women who are doing like booty shots on social media or they are dressing to where their breasts are hanging all the way out or um and i'm not saying you got to be covered up right because i wear shorts i wear tape tops i wear you know stuff that shows skin but excuse me i do it in a classy way so there's a way to show skin but still be you know uh modest at the same time right and you the beauty that you really need to focus on is the beauty on the inside because you could have you could be looking fine like I'm 
I'm trying to think of somebody. Okay, like Angela Bassett. Like, she's in her 60s, y'all. She can still look at her body a little better than mine, right? So, she's a very beautiful, good-looking older woman. And you can look like that, but if the inside of you is jacked up, if you're mean and you're hateful and you're rude and disrespectful and you're cussing after every other word and you know what I'm saying? Like, that makes you ugly, right? So, you can be very beautiful on the outside, but what comes out of your mouth? Because once she starts me, I've met some very beautiful women and some very good looking men. And once they start talking, you are no longer attractive. Because just the things that you're saying, the way you're carrying yourself, like it's a turn off. So you want to make sure that you're not just focusing on the outward appearance. And this is what Peter was talking about, where it says, you know, don't get caught up on the makeup and the jewelry and the clothes and you know all those things you need to focus on your spirit you need to focus on the inner on the inner man right the temptations got us on beauty's on the skin deep so you can be beautiful but you also need to start focusing on some other things and making sure that your character is a godly character you know how to have a conversation you know how to hold your anger you know how to not you know use profanity Right? You shouldn't be cussing at all, I'll be honest. And I, you know, and people have to work on that. I understand, you know, if you get upset or something, like I get it, okay? I get it. Um, but that's something that you want to work on, right? So, anyway, y'all, <laughs> I feel like I'm rambling. I hope you guys got something out of this video. Uh, make sure you guys share, like I said, like the video and tell other people about my channel. If you like, the coffee mug or any of that stuff like I said I'll have all of that in the description box below for you I also do have jewelry I have to talk about this in my videos y'all so if you like these earrings like y'all these earrings are super cute so if you like these or this bracelet um I also have you know rings and stuff up there as well everything is five dollars it is very great quality um the necklaces which I'm not wearing today but the necklaces come with matching earrings or if you just like necklace earrings or whatever like Check the website out, okay? I have something for everybody. And I have a podcast. That'll be in the description box below. All of my social media stuff will be in the description box. And if I think of anything else that I might be forgetting, I'll have that in the description box below for you as well. I'm making sure. Lord, is there anything else I need to say about Esther that I might have forgotten? I don't think so. I don't think so. All right. So, anyway, have a good rest of the day. Happy Easter. Resurrection Sunday. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Let me go ahead and end this. Bye.